Hello, welcome to Procontation Points Video Snark. I'm continuing my sarcastic book review of The Mister by E.L. James. Not the first video, go check out the others, links are posted below, chapter 25. The chapter opens with Max being awoken by Elisa screaming in terror in her sleep. He wakes her up just to stop the nightmare, but she almost immediately rolls back over and goes to sleep. The next morning, Elisa wakes up feeling refreshed, happy that she slept the entire night through without a nightmare. However, before you can scream out, plot whole time, Max asks if she doesn't remember the nightmare at all. She says no, and that's the end of that. They get showered and packed up and head back to London. On the ride there, Max talks some about his mother, says that she never really seemed to care about any of them, to the point where she literally left when Max was 12 for somebody else. They stop to get gas, which makes Elisa insanely anxious. Inside the service station, she starts to tell Max that this was all her mother's idea. However, Max makes her stop until they get back into the car, at least not wanting any of the random people also in the store or the clerk to hear this. She continues on and says that the man she was betrothed to was jealous of the tension she got whenever she played the piano and tried to break her fingers. This lashes into how she went with Dante and friend. In the back of the truck, she made friends with the girl who was 17. The two of them had plans to find work together. Dante took all of their things, and they only just had what they were wearing. They only had one bucket to do their business in, and were only just given one water bottle each. When they stopped to board a ferry, they had to wear bags over their heads because of some carbon dioxide monitors. But Elisa heard Dante talking in English that the girls would earn, would earn the money back by lying on their backs. And then she told the others, and enough of them made a break for it that that truck stopped as she'd previously told him. Max asked for the name of the man Elisa was betrothed to. However, she says that his name is like Voldemort, and that is literally the only thing she says about it. They drive for a while longer, and then she tells Max that the guy's name is Anton, Anton Lee Saki, which... I know that I probably butchered that, but okay. She also expresses that she's certain that his business is less than legal and her father probably owed him something. When they get back to London, they stop briefly to get new keys from Oliver, seeing as how the entire apartment door needed to be replaced. In the building, they stop briefly to talk with the old lady who lives next door, the one who called Max about the break-in. And then they bang. And the entire thing is just kind of randomly shoved into this chapter. It feels almost like an afterthought. Sometime later, Caroline calls. Max knows that he can't keep putting her off forever. He tells Elisa that he's going to go see Caroline, and it probably shouldn't take more than an hour, so could you maybe make something for us to eat? Chapter 26 Max goes to where Caroline lives. Meanwhile, Elisa unpacks her things before she walks around the apartment and considers it from the point of view of somebody who is now living there versus somebody who just works there. She thinks about what might have been taken and is pleased that the piano seems untouched. Back with Max, Caroline seems to be high in the middle of the depression stage of her grief. She says that she's gone over and over the day that Kit died and is of the opinion that Kit killed himself. Max thinks so too, but understands that agreeing with Caroline right now might not do her any good. We briefly switch over to Elisa and gah, pick one plot and write it. Stop it with this constant back and forth writing, especially if both plots are only going to be divided into five second snippets that get nothing accomplished. Caroline is upset to hear that Max is in love with somebody, and even more upset to learn that it's the lady who cleans his apartment. She also weaponizes Kit's death, although Max isn't surprised that she'd stoop so low. However, after they argue about this for about a page, we finally get to the meat of what's really bothering Caroline, that if Max is in love with literally anybody else, then he's not going to be with her. Caroline again tries to weaponize Kit's death, but Max has a counter, that Caroline picked Kit, and Max refuses to be a consolation prize. Caroline then screams at Max to get out, despite the fact that Max now owns this house too. Elisa has grabbed some money with the intention of going to the store to buy f some food for dinner. However, as she's walking there, she feels jumpy. She keeps telling herself that it's because of the recent encounter with Dante and Fran and reminds herself over and over that they're in police custody now. Instead, we get the third man in her life, her fiancé. But uh, enough of that for now. It was really, really important that we see Max fuming over his argument with Caroline. So Anatoly is here now, which I was honestly expecting but not really holding my breath about, especially not after what happened with Dante and friend. But I guess that we're going to have both, so yay, I guess? He says a lot of stuff about coming to find her, how worried her father is about her disappearance, that she's coming with him right now, not even giving her a choice. 
Elisa is just frozen on the spot with fear over this man. Thanks for listening to my book snuck on YouTube. New videos are up every Monday, but stick around because sometimes I drop random videos on other days too. You can like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss a single video. While you're waiting for the next video, you can go check out all my other videos. If you're already caught up with all of my videos, you can go to Tumblr for my main book snarks. Always free and updated every morning. And if you've already read all of my main snarks, then you can find even more snarks on my Patreon. You can access it for $1 a month. Plus, you get early access to my main Tumblr snark. Special thanks to Dawn, Phoebe, and Nikki for supporting me on Patreon already. If you want to hear your name in my video next week, you either support me on Patreon or make a one-time donation. Do you like my snark so much that you want me to snark your writing? I do that too. For just $3 per chapter, I will tell you how awful that your writing is. But not to worry if you feel like you couldn't take the criticism. I also offer regular book editing as well. $3 for every 5,000 words. You can contact me on Tumblr if you have further questions. If you want to read some of the things that I've written, you can purchase my works on Amazon. I have 19 erotic short stories, one short story collection, and one full-length novel. I also sometimes run flash sales on my stories, and if you don't follow me on any social media, you might want to do so just so you know when I might be offering more things for free. Links for everything will be posted below. See you next week, guys!